I'm Barry Norris. For our Absolute Return Fund, we hedge our market exposure through shorts to deliver a valuable return profile, not dependent on market beta and therefore different from most other equity funds. Without this ability to short the hedge, savings products would all become dangerously dependent on market positive returns. However, when the market falls, it is often blamed on short sellers. It's thought that short selling stocks on anticipation that their price will fall, as opposed to buying them in anticipation that their price will rise, is somehow immoral. This is bunk. In no other line of commerce are buyers considered morally superior to sellers. Moreover, in the course of our research, where we uncover poor corporate governance and wrongdoing, I believe that we have a moral imperative to act. If we are correct, and only if we are correct, do we make money for our investors. Set in 1936, the 1973 film The Sting saw Paul Newman and Robert Redford play two professional grifters attempting to con mob boss Doyle Lonergan out of his ill-gotten fortune. Newman poses as a Chicago bookie who cheats at cards in order to provoke Lonergan into seeking revenge. When Redford is asked the secret of his success at cards, he replies, he cheats. I'm afraid to say this is also true of many companies on the stock market. Often in the course of our research, we have come across many companies that seem too good to be true. Companies on the stock market raise money from the public and therefore subject themselves to the rigor of public analysis. This can be positive or negative. Most actors, management, banks, investors, are incentivized only for higher share prices and therefore become cheerleaders only interested in positive and uncritical narratives. Actors who are incentivized to think critically are therefore necessary for an efficient market. Without short sellers, we would be entirely dependent on monolithic financial regulators to expose deceits and wrongdoing. I have to tell you in all candor that their track record in this regard does not inspire confidence. The moral imperative of the short seller as truth seeker who only wins when they are correct and is therefore an essential part of the regulating stock market is not only important for corporate governance, but for the allocation of capital to good business models. This is a highly desirable outcome from both a moral and economic perspective. The creator of Sherlock Holmes, Arthur Conan Doyle, once claimed that healthy skepticism is the basis of all accurate observation. And that is as true in analyzing companies on the stock market as in investigating crime, and in particular, whether a company is run in the interests of all the shareholders or just the ones controlling the company. We have found that good corporate governance is incredibly important in sustainable share price performance. Insiders often cheat other shareholders for opacity and failure to disclose conflicts of interest or related third party transactions. Unlike many in our industry, we have been prepared to speak publicly about poor corporate governance. Other forms of ethical investing, whilst very popular, are often subjective. What is their definition of desirable corporate behaviour? How do they measure the morals of the company and their own success in imposing those morals on the company? Our success in highlighting poor corporate governance is defined through the share price performance of our short book. P.T. Barnum, the 19th century American showman, was alleged to have boasted, there's a sucker born every minute and one to take him. And he should have known, given his notoriety for promoting hoaxes or humbugs, such as the Fiji mermaid and Tom Fum. Bad corporate behavior and egregious claims for future success often gets overlooked in growth industries with powerful narratives. The more powerful the narrative, the more scope for bad behavior. In the desperation of government recently to, to find a solution to COVID, we've witnessed a number of companies with zero credibility claim to have a promising vaccine candidate. 
This has pumped up the shares of the company, allowing management to cash in their shares and exit their stakes in the company, a classic pump and dump tactic. Yet strangely, people think it's okay for management to do this, but immoral for us to short these shares. We are not short these companies because we don't desire a solution to COVID. We are short these companies because their claims of providing a solution to COVID do not stand scrutiny and are deceiving investors and taxpayers. The exaggeration of expectations is a deceit though not necessarily illegal, but it forms a key discipline in our identification of short candidates. Frank Borman is a retired astronaut, best known for being commander of Apollo 8, the first mission to fly around the moon. Between 1975 and 1986, he was CEO of Eastern Airlines. Having originally turned the airline around, the airline filed for bankruptcy in 1989 as a consequence of strikes, high debt, high fuel prices and rampant competition from no frills airlines. Phlegmatically, Borman commented that capitalism without bankruptcy is like Christianity without hell. Eastern Airlines, like all stock market insolvencies, went bust because it ran out of cash and the market refused to continue to fund a bad business model that would never sell a product for a profit. In other words, it refused to throw good money after bad. It did not go bust because it attracted short sellers. Bad businesses like Eastern Air, particularly with lots of leverage, attract short sellers because they destroy equity value. Instead of continuing to fund Eastern Air, the market looked for better businesses with better prospects. This is not immoral. Without this, we would not have economic growth or economic progress. In the film The Sting, Redford and Newman would con mob boss Doyle Lonergan out of half a million dollars for a bet on a sure thing horse race winner, Lucky Dan, then fake their own deaths in order to flee the scene. Justice was done. The film would go on to win seven Oscars, including Best Picture. That is what success looked like to them. For us, success is double digit annualized returns, which come at different times in the stock market and therefore most other funds. Given that beta can be bought cheaply through passive products, we believe that the future of active management is through more alpha, not beta. In fact, double alpha. This is what makes the fund a valuable diversifier. We cannot do this without the ability to short. Without shorts, the stock market would be more dishonest and economic growth would inevitably suffer. To expose deceits and bad businesses is, we believe, the moral imperative of the short seller. Thank you.